This is the Asus VivoBook S15, and this is the first Snapdragon X Elite laptop that I've gotten here into the studio. And this video is partnered with Asus, but I'm gonna be comparing it to other laptops. I'm jumping right into performance, and the specs on this guy are really good. This is a Snapdragon X Elite paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM, LPDR5X, very fast, 8,448 megahertz, beautiful 2.8K display, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. The big question I feel like a lot of you want answered right away is how is performance on battery? Because that's the one thing the MacBook has had over every single Windows laptop on the market. You get full performance on battery. Well, here's the good news. You almost get full performance on battery. Almost. And I mean, like, it's so negligible. It's crazy. Like, you're literally losing only 5% performance like i did a cinebench r24 test and the scores were so close that you could literally say this is negligible but you're losing a little bit five percent so you could literally take this on a plane without being plugged in and still get 95 percent of the performance which is something you couldn't do before even photoshop which is graphically intensive it uses the cpu the gpu the ram everything like photoshop has been built for arm you're getting like 96 percent of the performance which is insane now, the granted, you are going to get fan noise with a Snapdragon laptop that hasn't been removed. It's there, so get used to it. But it's not nearly as loud and audible as other Windows laptops. Like, don't get me wrong, like you're pushing this thing on full performance, it is gonna get into the 50s, but it's a lot harder to do. There's more of a buildup. Obviously, if you're just doing everything, like general everyday work, you're not gonna hear the fans. But if you're pushing it, it can get a little bit louder. The one thing I noticed right away using this product is how fast it is to load a browser. It's so snappy. Like I can't even describe it to you. Like if you're using Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, which are all recompiled for ARM, it's so snappy. Snappier than the fastest Intel laptop I have here. Faster than the fastest AMD laptop. Like that's the first thing you'll notice if you use this laptop. And the thing that I noticed right away is if you're using this on a daily basis, you're gonna get good battery life, like really good battery life. 70 watt hours is the battery size in here. And I was able to easily take this over 12 hours before needing to charge. And that's the story behind this laptop. If it's been compiled for ARM, the experience is great. But the moment you move over to an x86 app, depending on how demanding it is, that's where things start to change. Okay, I wanna talk about gaming for a second because the Qualcomm Adreno GPU inside of here is actually pretty powerful, but it's also kind of not because the majority of games we play today have been compiled for x86. And the way this works is that there's a translation layer. It's called Prism. It's made by Microsoft and Qualcomm and basically it takes the apps and translates it so that ARM can understand it. The problem though is you're losing a lot of performance, like 50% of that performance. Like I was playing with Adobe Premiere Pro, like I could totally load it up and use it and make a couple of edits. The experience wasn't super fast and it really got bogged down when it came to any sort of GPU based effects. Now DaVinci Resolve Public Beta 3, DaVinci Resolve 19 to be exact, has been built for ARM and it works great. You know, it's not perfect. Like I was able to go into a 4K timeline, make some cuts, edit a video, but as soon as I started adding some color, I had some ProRes, some Sony footage. You could get away with editing a video, but there is a little bit of a delay, like it's buffering or something, or the art dropped frames, but it's doable, right? Like no problem for 1080p, you're gonna be cutting and slicing faster than a fat kid on a Smarty. But when it comes to 4K, you still probably want a dedicated GPU. But the one area where I feel like the Snapdragon processor kind of suffers, is gaming because like i said the majority of games are built for arm and i tried lots of games like fortnite forget it it's not even gonna load it just says can't use it not meant for arm diablo 4 which is a very well optimized game not very demanding it will work and it runs for about a minute but then it gets an error a prism error and then it completely shuts down overwatch also a very low or easy to run game works but the maximum resolution is 1280 by 1080 which is not the best you can only run it in windowed mode you can only have the graphics at like medium it doesn't look that great and then when you actually play the game 
There's a lot of drop frames because it feel feel like it's translating on the fly. And that's the thing. No matter what game you play on this, if it's been optimized for x86, you're going to take a performance hit. Like even Dirt 5, which is supposed to be better on an ARM chip, 19 frames per second, 24 if you're lucky. Now, if you're playing an ARM game like World of Warcraft, whew, it's good. Like I was running World of Warcraft. I know it's an older game, but with high settings, 2880 or 2800 by 1620, which is its full 3K resolution, it ran good. Like I was getting 40 to 60 frames per second. If you drop it down to 1080, you're going all the way up to 70 frames per second. Now the laptop itself is actually really nice. Like Asus built a beautiful product. This only weighs 3.13 pounds. It's 0.63 inches thin. You have the Asus logo up here. Nothing fancy going on, but it is a complete metal chassis. It feels good in the hand. You do have a bunch of ports on the left-hand side. HDMI 2.1. You do have two USB 4.0 ports, a micro SD card, combo audio jack. And then on the right-hand side, you have two USB a ports the actual experience for typing is also really good like the display goes all the way flat like this you know like you can completely put this under a monitor use the keyboard with the external display which does work with this you can easily connect the 4k display to this it's not going to be an issue and type on it like typing feels good it's nice and clicky and you also get that full numeric keypad you do have RGB lighting, it's only one color and you can obviously change that in the ASUS software settings. Sticker guy is getting the business because it just used to be Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. Now we got a new sticker on board. This is the Snapdragon X Elite sticker. You know how much money this guy is making? To onboard a new sticker is at least $50 billion. And look at that. It has its own space on the left-hand side away from the co-pilot branding now you're probably wondering matt where is all the copilot ai tricks well i can't show you in this video because 12 hours after this video is released microsoft is pushing out a copilot plus pc update with all the ai features which i'll save for a future video now asus did put a beautiful oled panel in this system it's 120 hertz it's 3k it's 16 by 9 which i don't know how everybody feels about that but if you like 16 by 9 you're gonna like this panel especially because it's very pixel dense the brightness is good the color gamut is exceptional it's a fantastic display for watching content and doing any sort of design work so this is what the 1080p webcam looks like uh this is natural lighting no studio lighting just a little bit of a window in front of me more realistic. You guys let me know how it looks. More importantly, how do the microphones actually sound? Now, unfortunately, HW Info does not work on this computer, so I can't measure temperature. Same with MSI Afterburner because they are x86 apps. They just won't show anything. But the deck of the keyboard never got too hot. I feel like it was performing as it should. And I don't think the Snapdragon processors in general are going to be overheating just because most of these laptops or actually the majority of these laptops all come with a cooling solution so you're going to have a lot more thermal headroom it does come with a 90 watt charger in the box but internally the only thing you can upgrade is the mvme ssd the ram is obviously soldered onto the motherboard same with the wi-fi card like this is a qualcomm wi-fi card so it's better than most of the intel and other wi-fi cards we're used to so you're going to get good transfer speeds with this you do have that big 70 watt hour battery, which I already talked about. And then you have two speakers on the bottom that sound good. So here's the bottom line. The Asus VivoBook S15 as like a laptop piece of hardware, it's gorgeous. It has a great display, tons of ports, it's thin and it's light, but you still need to understand what you're getting yourself into because this is using ARM and we still live in a very x86 world. Like if you're someone who's living in a browser and want the fastest browser experience on the Windows side, you're going to love this. If you're using Microsoft Office, if you're using Photoshop, if you're using Lightroom, you will love this. If you want full performance on battery, you're gonna love it. But if you plan on doing any sort of gaming, you're not gonna have the best experience right now. I also can't guarantee if it's gonna work with all your devices. Like a lot of those devices you use, whether it's like a preamp or an audio device, might use x86 software. It might work, it might not. And those are the things you might 
run into. I also feel like this is a fine wine. As time goes on, it's just going to get better and better and better. We just need developers to start making more ARM software because this is the future I want. I want the good battery life. I want the performance off the charger and I can't wait for it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.